This morning, the whole town sank a tender, pure milk. Days like this are like spending with a cup of tea and a good book. A delicious cake would complete the scene perfectly. So that's what I'm cooking today. A lemon tart for lazy days. Before we begin, I have to apologize for that band-aid on my hand. I've just had an unintentional argument with a door handle and a door handle one. Anyway, it won't affect the taste and you definitely shouldn't have an argument with a door to cook this cake. In this recipe, I'm replacing sugar with stevia to reduce calories. Of course, you can use sugar if you prefer, but it will significantly increase the calorie content of this cake. And who wants to worry about burning those extra calories on a lazy day? While cooking the crust, I'd like to share a surprising fact about the French lemon tart. It's not originally French. People have been making various custards since the Middle Ages, but the first mention of a lemon custard and a tart with lemon curd appears in an old English handwritten cookbook from late 18th century. Thus, credit for the start goes to the English, not the French. In that recipe, custard differs from the modern one containing double the number of eggs, twice as much sugar and butter instead of cream. I even went to the French internet to check if that attribution was correct. They acknowledge that this tart is a foreign invention, though they attribute it to an American pastry chef, Elizabeth Goodwill. Well, whoever invented the cake made a fabulous culinary invention that became one of the most popular pastries in the world. I've been experimenting with various recipes to find the best way to cook a lemon tart. I also tried different crusts and found this one that I absolutely love. However, if you want to make crust lighter, you can try using a quiche cake butter crust that doesn't include eggs. Some recipes suggest adding a massive amount of water to the dough, which can ruin the cake. I recommend starting with just a few splashes and adding more, if necessary. Additionally, lemon zest is a must-have ingredient as it adds extra flavor to the cake. When I cooked this tart for the first time, I was following the Jamie Oliver's recipe from his book, Five Ingredient Mediterranean, where Jamie omitted a heavy cream from the curd. While this made the cake lighter, it resulted in overly lemony and dry custard. Still, I'll stole one element from Jamie Oliver's recipe, cooking the tart in a regular pan instead of a tart tin. While it makes the process slightly more complicated, it gives the tart a rustic look. I believe the extra 5 minutes of cooking time is worth it. Now the dough must rest for one hour in the fridge, and I decided to take a relaxing walk in the olive garden nearby. It's my favorite season as the almond trees are starting to bloom. It's quite mesmerizing, especially since the flowers emerge before the leaves. Hello! Here's a helpful tip to avoid issues with your dough. Don't push too hard. Although it may sound like an unwanted piece of life advice, it actually makes a difference. Lightly pressing the rolling pin, roll the dough a few times in one direction, then in another. And repeat until the dough is about 4mm thin. I really enjoy using this dough for its forgiving nature. You can quickly fix something by taking a small piece from any other part if anything breaks. And if the whole thing is messed up or if you like me need to reshoot a moment to make the video look better, you can quickly reshape the dough into a bowl and roll it out again. Of course, you can use a tart tin instead of a pan, which will make things easier. However, I really enjoy the rustic look of the cake's rough borders with little cracks. I think they add so much coziness to the cake, and that's exactly what I'm going for today. If you don't have a tart tin but want smooth edges, don't worry. Simply remove excess dough with a spatula 
but make sure to leave enough height for the custard. Keep in mind that the crust will shrink a little in the oven. Next, let's do a rest for another half an hour. In the meantime, you can start cooking the curd or also take a break. When the case is chilled and the oven is 175 degrees hot, it's time to spear the pizza. The crust may bubble a little and the weight will prevent it from happening. You may place special pie weights, baking or regular beans, and even rice will feed your crust. The good thing about it, you may use it over and over again. It's the first time my beans have an oven journey and they still look good. Just separate them from the dough with a parchment paper or foil to prevent them from sticking. I'm not sure what I'm always doing wrong with eggs, but even if I handle them extra carefully, one or two yolks always end up getting ruined. Luckily, this recipe calls for four eggs and two yolks, so I have some room to ruin everything. All the recipes I have come across suggest using brown eggs for custard, as they supposedly have brighter yolks that enhance the color of the curd. However, the harsh truth is that the yolks of brown eggs from the store are only slightly darker than those of white eggs. Therefore, if white eggs are more affordable, I encourage you to use them instead. While I was beating eggs, the dough had its best time in the oven with the beans. Now it's time for them to separate and move forward. Place the beans into a bowl to let them chill and send the dough back to the oven for about 10 minutes. As you are still watching the video, I hope you find it helpful and enjoy it. I will build to the moon if you subscribe to my channel and you like means the world to me. If you've been following me for some time, you may have noticed that my older videos look different. I'm still experimenting with the style, trying to find the best one, and it can be only achieved through trial and error. I don't know where my search will lead me, but I have a clear idea of what I want to do. Tasty, healthy and budget-friendly meals. And I'm so grateful that you are here with me on this journey. Thanks for your support. In my town, for a few weeks during the winter, I can buy local lemons that were harvested ripe. They have a delightful citrus perfume-like aroma. The lemons I'm peeling are not those ones. Still, I have chosen them very carefully by smelling each one of them to find the most aromatic so that I can get the best zest for my cake. Thus, when you'll be purchasing the goods for this cake, try to find the best lemons. They are responsible for the whole cake's taste. It's time to share the hash truth about my cooking the start. I'm not satisfied with the look of the cake I got. Out of the oven it came with the pleasant cracks that cheesecake sometimes get. I tried to prevent it the next day by cooking one more tart following the exact same steps but with the steam in my oven and still got the cracks. If you wonder why do I need two exactly the same tarts, the second one was for the anniversary of my favorite place in the town. But back to cooking. The only way to skip the cracks is to pre-cook your custard on low heat, continuously whisking it until it thickens before placing it in the oven. Also, plate it closer to the top broiler and cook for only a few minutes. Another way to skip the cracks is to hide them with some decorations. And that's what I did. So here I just quickly place the video's cover to remind you what it looks like. But if you're going to eat it alone, why worry about the cracks? Life isn't perfect. Let them happen. In the history of lemon tart, I mentioned that instead of butter, heavy cream is used for the custard in the recipes these days. However, I personally prefer to use cream cheese for slightly cheesecake-like texture. It's up to you to choose which one to use. And in the description, I will provide both options with their measurements, so you can decide which one is better for you. And now, we are on the final step. 
I've been dreaming of peace of the start for a few hours, so let's send it to the oven that has cooled down to 150 degrees Celsius and wait 25 minutes. If you have heated your custard, lucky you, you have to wait just a few minutes. Night and the mist heat in the house nearby. The tart is room temperature cold and the tea is steaming. It's such a perfect moment to read. Thank you for watching and bon appetit.